Hi, and thank you for joining us at Allen High School. I'm going to try something a little bit different. If you'll notice in the background, there's a song, a very appropriate song playing. And I want to welcome you to chemistry, where we're about to talk about percent yield. Now, let's take a look at our formula. What we have here is our theoretical yield, and that's what we get from our stoichiometry. That's very important. Okay, I hope you can hear this song. You can't always get what you want. Rolling Stones, classic. Now, this applies to chemistry because that is the reality. Even though our stoichiometry indicates that we are going to get a certain amount of product, the reality is, is you just can't always get what you want. And that's where the experimental yield is going to come into play. What happens is even though stoichiometries are assumed to go 100%, there's often some sort of loss somewhere. Uh, you'll see as you do experiments, we lose some in containers. So just in terms of transfer processes, we may lose. Sometimes we'll lose some because there are side reactions. Just to give you a few examples. In other words, life isn't perfect. We're not going to get what we want. And so what a percent yield does, sorry, what a percent yield does is it compares what we actually made or what was done in the experiment compared to that utopia of the theoretical or maximum yield from our stoichiometry. So let's see how this will come into play in terms of our calculations. We have, in this case, 32 grams of methane at STP. That's very important. Um, may not apply, but it's still important information. So we have methane, and we're going to produce water. And the question is going to extend what we've been doing so far by saying, what is the percent yield, or sometimes called the efficiency? I'm sorry it's got a variety of names, but it does. So look at this mess. There's no way you're gonna get what you want. So let's start with our balanced equation. We have CH4 plus oxygen yields CO2 plus water. And we do need a two here, and then that's balanced. That was it. Now we have 32.00 grams and this implies that we have excess, plenty, excess oxygen. You will learn to love those words, I tell ya. By the time we get to the end of this chapter, we're going to see situations where that's not true. The first thing we want to do, if we want our percent yield, so to find the percent yield requires our experimental over our theoretical times 100. Now, we're given our experimental. Be very careful because we're given two numbers here. One of them jumps into our stoichiometry and the other is going to end up being in the numerator of our percent yield. You ought to write down the percent yield formula right away, times 100. Now that is my ultimate question mark. Okay, so I'm going to, I need to go to grams, and then I've got to go mass to moles of water, and then I've got to go moles of water to grams of water. So mass to moles, use molar mass. Moles to moles, remember, use that magic mole ratio. And then I want to go to grams of water, and I know that because my actual or experimental was given in grams. Now, this is going to be grams that is my, are my maximum or theoretical yield. In other words, perfection. Nothing went wrong in the lab. You've done enough labs to know that something's bound to go wrong somewhere along the path. 
So let's take a look at our calculation. This part of it is something you've seen before many, many times, and you've now practiced it in class. C2H4, I want to go to moles of C2H4. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned it, but did, do you, did I mention maybe that, that we want to label this? Okay, you have to label, label, label. Now, this told me I was at STP, and that got my heart up because I thought, wow, I'll get to use that really easy 22.4 liters per mole, but no, I don't because it asked me. It gave me grams, so I didn't get to use it. Now we're at that magic mole ratio, and I want to eliminate moles of CH4, and I want moles of H2O. There's a 2 in front of the water and a 1 in front of the methane. Now I want to go to grams of water and get rid of moles of water. Okay, So that would be my stoichiometry. Now that is going to give me my link in and out. The stoichiometry will give me my link to the percent yield. So the maximum I could make is 71.86 grams. Or in theory, assuming everything was perfect, I'd make 71.86 grams. So now, if I do that calculation, I find that my percent yield is 41.74%. Now, honestly, what's a good yield and what's not a good yield really depends on the process. Some processes in, in a manufacturing situation would demand a 99% yield, and other processes would be really happy if they got a 5% yield. So it just depends on the experiment itself. So. Let's try another one of these. We're on 1017. We have the combustion of octane. So octane is C8H18 plus oxygen yields CO2 plus H2O. Now, if you balanced that correctly, and you should try these, you can always pause the video and try on your own. I'd get a 2, a 25, a 16, and an 18 here. Now, the question asks again about how many grams of water, but this time it's saying, what could I expect knowing that I'm only 74.3% efficient? So once a, a facility has defined or you know evaluated a process and come up with an acceptable efficiency or yield, now we want to start, you know, designing the whole process. So since this asks for percent yield or gives percent yield, I strongly recommend you write your percent yield formula. And that's going to be my actual, another word for that is experimental. I wish it were different. I really do. Um, but we use different words. They're synonyms. Synonyms. <laughs> all the time, theoretical or maximum, and times 100. Now this time it gave me my percent yield as 74.3, and it asked for my actual or experimental. So that means I'm going to have to do a stoichiometry to get up and into that formula. So let's go ahead and write our givens underneath. I have 90, whoa, not a good color here, sorry, 90.00 grams of my octane, and I need to get over to grams of water. Cute cartoon, but you're kind of in my way, kids. All right, so let's get to the mole road. We can only relate these on a mole to mole basis. So I need to go mass to moles, moles to moles, moles to mass very much like what we had before. Mass to moles, use molar mass. Moles to moles, we ride down the mole road on the magic mole ratio. It always reminds me of that magic school bus TV show that my sons used to watch. Okay, so I've got my starting point. I have direction to my ending point. And let's see what we end up with in terms of what could I truly expect to get? I mean, I need to make buckets owe money. And how much am I going to be able to expect with my starting amount? So I've got 90.0 grams of C8H18. 
and I want to eliminate grams of my C8H18 and I want to go to moles of C8H18. Now, I know I'm your elderly educator, but I think I better check that I told you this. Did I remind you guys to label what you're talking about so you don't get lost along the way? You know, ju just checking. 114.26 grams. Now, I want to eliminate my moles of C8H18, and I want moles of water. And I can grab that ratio. There's an 18 in front of the water, and there's a 2 in front of the octane. And now, I can finish this up by multiplying by the molar mass of water. So hopefully, you really are feeling comfortable with how to do a, a straight-on stoichiometry. Now I can plug these numbers in. I have 74.3% is equal to x, my unknown, over, if I did that algebra down there, I got 127.7 times 100. And so my final answer is, I'm just going to put it in the middle, I'm running out of room, 94.88 grams of water could actually be produced from this starting amount, assuming I'm going to lose almost 26% of it. Okay? So, all right, we have one more percent yield problem. So let's go ahead and work this out because this time we're going to move into our stoichiometry. And I've tried to move away from all of this talk about water, um, but we still have a few lingering examples. So if you take hydrogen and oxygen, you'll make water. Now, I have a process that I know is 86% efficient, all right? And this time I've calculated, man, if I'm going to make payroll, I need to make 100 kilograms of water. I need to actually produce in my manufacturing facility or in the lab. Okay. Remember, it is the theoretical that is my link between stoichiometry and the real world, the percent error. So now I've got to do a stoichiometry. So I want to actually produce 100 grams. This time I only have one unknown here. And I have nothing to put into my framework. It asks me how many liters, question mark, liters of oxygen at STP, but I have no number to pop in here. Well, that's because the number that goes in here is going to come from this calculation. And so we need to do some cross multiplying. I would have x is equal to 100 over 86 times 100. Okay, I just did some cross multiplying to solve for my unknown x here. And when we did this, I, we would get 1 16 kilograms. So that means I have to find a starting amount that would in theory give me 116 kilograms so that I can hope to actually produce 100 kilograms so I can sell enough to make payroll. So that's where we're at. And that's how you can tell which one you're dealing with with these is which one, if that only has one unknown, if this has only one unknown here, you're going to start here. If there's two unknowns, you're going to end here. So I've got to make my way to kilograms. And actually, I've got to go through grams. So that's going to be two steps. And then I'll go to moles. And then I'll go moles to moles and moles to liters. Map it out. So I'm going to go to grams and then to moles. Once I'm on the mole road, I can drive down the mole road with my magic mole ratio. And then, since I have a gas, and that gas is at STP, for here I get to use that 22.4 liters is equal to one mole conversion factor. So let's hop onto our mole road and get this problem on the road. Okay, so I'll need 
to my starting point, I've got to get to grams, then I've got to get to moles, then I've got to go moles to moles, and then moles to grams. Okay, so um, 116 kilograms of water. I want to get rid of kilograms. Remember, you have to refresh your memory on prefixes, polyatomics, all sorts of things like that. Okay, so one goes by the prefix. The scientific notation goes by the lonely base unit, the one without the prefix. Remember Saturday Night Live? And that's of water. And now I want to get rid of grams of water. I want to go to moles of water. Mass to moles, use molar mass. Now I want to eliminate moles of water and go to moles of hydrogen. There's a two here, and you know what? There should be a two here as well. Even if that's a one-to-one -one ratio, you need to show that so that you can prove to me as I'm looking for partial credit that you understood the concept, that we have to relate these on a mole-to-mole -mole basis. Now I can get to liters. One mole of hydrogen is 22.4 liters. And once I crank out that math, and I'm going to go to 86% is two sig figs, three fig, sig figs. I'm going to round to two sig figs. 1.4 times 10 to the fifth liters of hydrogen gas. I hope they've got that carefully sealed because you know that that will explode in the presence of, of oxygen if they're not really careful. All right. So that's it on percent yield for now. It will come back to revisit us. And the next thing we're going to do is deal with limiting reactants. What if we don't have something in excess? So until then, this is signing off.